Hello, everybody, and welcome to the JRPG Book Club podcast. Today on the magazine rack, we have some gaming news. Woo, gaming news. Gaming uh, news. <laughs> as you can see, we're missing our wonderful co-host, Ty. Uh, he had some uh, personal issues yeah. he had to take care of today. And uh, we're sending him all of our well wishes because he is an amazing human being and we care about him. Uh, Love you, Ty. Love you, Ty. Bye. Hi. Bye. Whatever. Hi, bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we got a lot more news than I thought we were. We kind of just pulled up a bunch last minute. And we're like, oh, yeah, that's kind of a thing that we might want to talk about, you know. Uh, but to get things started, what have you been up to, Jack? Uh, I haven't been on a break of video games for a bit. I, uh, after that Ratchet and Clank update, I went through that and blazed through that. And then I was just like, I think, yeah, T Attack on Titan just released their last chapter a few days ago. And the so the manga? Binged. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was like 35 chapters behind. And so I just spent the next couple of days reading through that and caught up and now I, I'm really sad. <laughs> I just did that with uh, I just did that with my Hero Academia, and because I, I, I was I more than thirty chapters, probably closer to sixty, I think. So we're between thirty and sixty, right? Mm. Um, and that the three hundred seven was the last one I read. Uh, there's probably three hundred eight or three hundred nine out by now. It's been a couple weeks, but like I was like, oh, because the next part <laughs> people are speculating might be the last arc. Because like the way they spun it, I'm like, oh, okay, we'll see. But like. Oh, <laughs> uh, so I, I feel yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, they are halfway through the final season of Attack on Titan. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be like another year before they get the next other half out. Yeah, I didn't so, realize it was the first half of the final season. I right, thought it was just like the final, final season. season, and then it didn't end. And I was like, <laughs> what? Right. Well, oh, the manga wasn't done, then, so it's yeah. like on top of it. Right. But it's done now, and it's. Bitter, I guess it's bittersweet ending. Mm. I don't want to spell too much, but I haven't I mean, watched any of it. The whole show is but... not happy. It's it's all depressing, right? <laughs> so, but it's good. It's so good. No, I I've heard nothing but good stuff for that show, and I've got a couple of friends who are like, "You need to watch it." I'm like, "I know, but you know, <laughs> life." Yeah, definitely watch it. The I've soundtrack been... is so good. Mm. I I go on so. As you as you know, I go into modes where like what content I watch. Where I'm like, mm -hmm. I'll be playing a game and then maybe having like a show in the background or something. Um, but the thing I actually focus on just kind of rotates out. It's like, cool. Right now I'm into games. Right now I'm into movies. Right now I'm into shows. Right now I'm into anime. Right, right. and it just rotates around. And, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. I've been better at kind of like mixing stuff up where it's like you know, one, one a week or whatever. Right. So I could at least like progress on stuff <laughs> instead of just like catching up to something, waiting like a year and then catching back up again. And then you're playing yeah. a huge amount of catch up. Um, but I've also been getting, uh, my best friend into more animes cause he's been like, he's been watching stuff. He's been watching old stuff and I'm like, Oh, you should check this one out or you should check this other thing out. And, uh, so him, him is coming back to me like saying like, Oh yeah, I started watching this one. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just got a friend of mine to start reading Berserk. I'm like, dude, you, you love Oh yeah, you love anime. that one. You gotta start Berserk. It's uh, so good. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched or read any of that either. Don't watch it. It is honestly <laughs> trash. Oh really? What they what they did with the anime. That happens. Like, they they did like the first season and it's like i think like in the 80s or something like it's old school uh, anime art style and i think that, that yeah was fine. I've, se I've seen some of that art yeah yeah and then they did movies ovas which mm -hmm. the art looks good but they go gloss over so much important character development stuff and oh sure yeah it's fine and then they did an uh after the movies they did another 3d anime uh thing and it looks terrible and the, the details are just how long ago was did they do that because like unless it was made in the last like year or two it's probably terrible oh, yeah no it was made like i think five or six years ago <laughs> something like that but it yeah, looks the, bad i feel like the last like two or three years is where like if somebody says 3d anime i don't suddenly just like shudder you know um it's still not it's still not great Apple sure 
Yeah, that that's a decent one from from mm. a while ago too. Right. I, I could like I would have ever known about that one if it wasn't for you, because <laughs> you're like Bill. Watch this one. Mm -hmm. you had a couple friends in the past that were big like influence in my like what i watched anime wise Mm. because like i wasn't super into it and then do you remember when we were getting together when uh death note was first coming out as a show oh that would spread like wildfire everyone was watching that that was outside of like random stuff on outside of random stuff on like toonami as a kid right like dragon ball or whatever which right counts but doesn't at the same time kind of thing (laughs) um that was my first like real like this is anime you know uh and and since then i've like seen and explored so many different ones and stuff right over the years but that was my first like real like oh right Mm -hmm. and yeah (laughs) that's that's like a throwback right i'm just like man we're we're, time right (laughs) back in like high school (laughs) I know, way back then. Um, what yeah. have you been doing? I so uh, some people might know. I'm good friends with the guys over at the Rediscover Geek podcast, and uh, I'm going to be on it tonight. Uh, which yeah. you'll be able to see a vod of it if you are because this is recording today, so it won't be edited and done, and so it'll be out in a couple of days. Um, but we were. I was. I was told it was supposed to be this week, so I've been like trying to hammer through chrono trigger because that's uh their topic oh, for yeah. next week uh i th- they told me it was for this week but they messed up <laughs> and so instead of watching the show that was actually supposed to be for this week uh i just i just hammered through chrono trigger i'm like i'm a little over three quarters of the way through and i know them where there's a very good chance that they don't finish it uh yeah. luckily i've played it before but like playing through it now i'm like oh yeah and then like connecting dots with some of the stuff with chrono cross and stuff has been kind of cool yeah, right? Isn't that neat? Yeah, well, I've it's, probably it's, played through Chrono Trigger like four times, so yeah. It's probably it's like been at least off. like 15 years for me. Like, it's been a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and without giving anything away, but like there's a reason why this is considered one of the best games ever made and like re- regularly regarded number one, you know? Um, but more on that if you guys watch uh, not this week, but next week's Rediscover Geek podcast uh the week of is April 20th should be unless anything weird happens. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been hammering through Chrono Trigger and uh, I played a little bit of the new game. Uh, it takes two. Yeah. Um, and Ooh, play that one. it's, it's fun. Like it's not hard, like not particularly hard. Like there, there's challenge to it. Right. But it's not like hard, hard or it, it's meant to be a co-op thing. So like, it's there's elements of puzzles things like that my big complaint is it's very like it's very rules of three heavy right and if you've been playing games long enough or or anything long enough you're like okay i see this pattern everything kind of follows it so i, I kind of know what's going on however the game is really pretty like it's pretty it's a fun co-op game it's nothing like super crazy it's oddly like there's certain points where it's like that's kind of dark like <laughs> What? Uh, so, uh, if you don't want to hear spoilers for it, uh, cover your ears. But it's it's some minor spoilers, right? Um, so the premise of the game is you get turned into these like dolls, right? You're you're a couple, and you're about to go through divorce, and you get turned into these dolls by your kid because she cries on them, and it's voodoo magic kind of thing, right? And there's this book of love that's trying to like help you fix your shit, right? And uh. There's points. So, so the, the parents are like passed out in the house and the kid will like go in and be like, Hey, uh, dad, uh, mom said that, you know, like trying to like get you guys back together and stuff. And it's like, it's kind of endearing, but at the same time, it's like, this kid is going to be scarred. Like they're, they're breaking up. They're going to like, then they're just ignoring her. It feels like they're not because they're like passed out or whatever, but it looks, you know? And so I'm just like, man, uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it, it feels kind of dark and kind of like oh no <laughs> um it's got this happy atmosphere kind of like in the art style and everything yeah it will i i said it very much is like a mix between uh, we kept saying it's a mix between like drew not dreamworks uh pixar and like Coraline. um mm. because like everything's very like it's all small and handmade and like dollish and stuff you know as a majority sake 
And so it kind of has that kind of vibe, in my opinion. Um, but it's neat. I, I, I've enjoyed it so far. Um, I, I, I can't say, because I'm only like, I think, I think we're only three chapters in. Um, the bit we have played has been super fun. There's, there's a couple quick, like really fun timing sections and stuff like that. Um, so far, I don't know if it's worth 40 bucks, but like if you and a friend split it for 20 each or something, that's definitely worth your time. Um, right, you only need one copy. Exactly. They, they have the, the friends pass thing, which is cool. Anyway, I've enjoyed my time with it. Um, and yeah, it's basically been about it for me. That's cool. cool. Uh, some ads, some ads, a ads. Hey, how about them ads? Them ads. Uh, so we have a good handful of stories today. Uh, the first one we wanted to touch base on, uh, that Jack wanted to talk about was Bioshock. Yeah. I was a big fan of Bioshock back in the day. I was not. Um, I played like the first one. I love the style. Like, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I played I played the first one. It was cool, but like I never got into it further than that. I played through most of the first one. I, even, I don't think I even finished the first one, uh, which I know is like probably like some sort of gaming sin to people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I love like I love Art Deco. And so I'm like a huge fan of the art of it, though. So mm -hmm. take that as you will. Yeah, I really like Bioshock one. That was that's one of those games with like an amazing twist. And yeah, like Kosar. Right. Bioshock 2 didn't really have that, but it had a more, what I felt was a, a really good story. Hmm. Um, and the gameplay was a lot more fun. And then 3 had a crazy story that um, opened up a lot of crazy possibilities, as well as making it not it. Like, closing the door to the story. Like, we hmm. don't need Wrapping it, anymore, it up. But like, hey, it, there could be more. Like, it was right. neat. I thought it was fun. Um, but they had announced a while back, I remember, that they're doing another Bioshock. And we did, haven't gotten any news about it until today when someone uh, noticed something about the studio, Cloud Chamber, that's making the game. Um, they're, uh, they have jobs. Are they working with 2K or how is that working? Uh, I believe they would be. Okay. Um, they're for, it looks like they're working on AI... Uh, UI design, Ooh. senior world designer, senior technical designer, and senior writer. That's cool. Um, but on those job listings, they say they don't say Bioshock Four specifically, but we mm. know that they're working on the game. But one, what they do say is that the job that they're looking for is someone who can weave impactful, character-driven stories in an open-world setting. Huh. The senior Neat. writer will be brainstorming primary, secondary mission content with the design and helping in the creation and execution of core story, including the writing of dialogue and other narrative elements as director. Hmm. So, hmm. Uh, Sick. hinting at the possible open world Bioshock. That could be neat. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to go. Right. I'm honestly <laughs> kind of tired of open world games, mostly. If you could, like, mean, like, I feel like it has to be done right, right? Like, any, any game. Yeah. You, you can make anything as a platform as long as it's done right, right? Like, it's done with care and still feeds the original intents, I feel like, because mm -hmm. it still appeals to the uh, the audience that originally accepted it, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of open of smaller open worlds with bigger, like, more intricate dungeons and mm -hmm. layouts. Like, the original Bioshocks were, were good, like one and two were at least to me because they had, um, you know, they showed you your map and they had this big open area, but some areas were locked off, but you could right. still go and explore everything. So it was almost like a semi open world kind of thing. And yeah, I get that. Through that that way, and then you would go to the next level. I and just like the I shock really things. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a linear open world style, and I think that's the way to go. That's fair. But then there's another hint down here. That says the video AI programmer, um, the job will be involved developing an urban crowd system and a systemic tribal ecology of mm. a sometimes hostile AI. So Weird. we might have an open world that's populated like with AI-driven ecology. 
but that's kind of cool. like a Bioshock Her- setting. Horizon that Zero. Be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> be interesting to see how that goes. I'm like, what are they going to do next? Like, we've been underwater. We've been in the air. Uh, robots. The You're being techno world. In techno world. Yeah. You heard it here yeah. first, folks. Techno world. <laughs> Don't be confused with the techno drone. No, it's, it's another not thing. Drone. <laughs> <laughs> Those pesky <laughs> turtles are always getting in the way. <laughs> this what is part the of the Ninja part Turtles part of arcade thing. It's like a cross promotion. <laughs> it's just a whole world of turtles and rats and the very other elaborate animal people. <laughs> it's a very elaborate crossover. It just takes place in the sewers, and this is big hall <laughs> yeah. ecology down in the sewers. <laughs> oh goodness! Yeah. Uh, I'd love to play that game. <laughs> right. You skateboard to get around through all the sewer drains. <laughs> Find, finding <laughs> random slices of pizza everywhere. <laughs> oh, uh, that'd be great. But yeah, it's, so it sounds neat. Who knows what's gonna happen? Who knows if that's even for Bioshock? But yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about an open world Bioshock. I, I, I'd have to see them do it well, I guess. Like, right. I mean, they haven't given you any reason not to think you're going to do well. It's also 2K, right? Like, how many times have they really messed anything up for you, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, Infinite was was a different thing. A lot. Of, it, it was very div- like a lot of the fans were divided and liking sure. it and not liking it. So. I mean, that, that's what happens when you take something in a different route. I feel like that's that's pretty normal. Yeah. Like, you know, some people just like, oh, I like the original one. I don't want anyone to touch it or whatever. And they see anything after original intent or proper sequel or something as like side or lesser or something like that. And yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's weird. So it depends on the person, right? Like sometimes it hits you, sometimes it doesn't. Like that, that's what second takes are. Right. So we'll see. Infinite try to do something different. And I think that's fine. But, you know, it's what it is um yeah uh let's see what do we got next let's talk uh let's talk that code name x thing yes so earlier today um there was a reveal of a game called code name x uh jack what do you know about it uh i know from what the article i sent you that that came out with a teaser trailer and a lot of people were wondering what it was and then through, what was it, data mining, they found something like that. Translations, and it meant, and the translations were saying it was a Persona game, a Persona Five game. Yeah, cro- some crossover of it, and like watching the trailer, it very much like is that style. Um, but I think it said in the thing it was a mobile game, right? Mm-hmm. And so mobile games are weird, right? So we've, I feel like we've come a long, long way in the mobile game market recently. Like it's enough where I have uh, a couple that I've like been really into. Right. I have one that's like my regular, I've talked about in the show many times. It's the tales of Crystoria. The story in that is great. Um, and there's a bunch of other games that are like making really like big and diverse games for being on mobile. Like it, it's pretty impressive. Um, Atlas themselves have done one called uh, it's called DX two. Um, I don't remember what the full name that that stands for. Um, but it's, it's decent. Like it came out a couple years back. Um, it's not a persona game. It's a Shin Megami Tensei game more particularly, um, which to a lot of people, it's like, why aren't they the same kind of thing? SMT is like persona's daddy. Um, we haven't had like a proper SMT game in a while. Um, and so, and persona has gained a ton of popularity recently. And it, it's really, it's become its own thing. Since Persona 3, it's really started to become its own thing. Especially with 4 and 5. Like, it's it's a big division off of it, right? Um, but, you know, th- this could be cool. Because it's like SMT, or mo- er, Persona mobile game. Could be cool. And if it actually has, like, quote-unquote canon, like, things to it, I'm all for it. I, I like that. Uh, I've been playing, well, I haven't played it in the last week or so, but, uh, I was playing strikers a bunch recently and I'm a good chunk through that. I need to finish Ugh, it. I do so. want to play that. <laughs> Gotta play persona, f- uh, five first, dude. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I need to finish Royal cause I finished P five and luckily strikers is a sequel to persona five, not persona five Royal specifically. 
Um, so it makes me feel okay to play it. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't actually come off the extra content at all. Like, there, there's none of the extra characters or anything like that in the game. Um, and a lot of the characters that you knew before, outside of the main cast, aren't really there. So take that as you will. Um, they're mentioned. A bunch of them were mentioned. But, yeah. Uh, this is one that I'm going to keep my eye out on. Because, like, I've become much more accepting of mobile games in recent years. And as everyone here knows, I love Persona. I really love Persona. Uh, I have, yeah, it, it's a thing I enjoy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited to see what we get out of this, uh, despite it being super early on the news on it. So uh, the next thing we wanted to talk about was the Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade announcement trailer. Mm. Um, Give it to me already. <laughs> or Sorry. So with, with the new update that we just received, uh, it's not... The persona, uh, it's not Final Fantasy VII uh, integrated anymore. It's Perso- Persona. F- I keep saying Persona. <laughs> <laughs> the Final Fantasy VII remake intermission, which is go. a significantly better name in my opinion. Uh, integrate and intermission, like it's not the hugest difference, but it, it just clearer, I think, uh, yeah. as a as a thing to say. Um, but yeah, there's some there's some Dirge of Cerberus love. There's some Yuffie love. So. Uh, you want to talk about it for a sec, Jack? Oh, man. So, <laughs> I was a big fan of Yuffie, Yuffie uh, in the game. She was definitely one of my main party members. <laughs> and her being uh, a playable character in this is going to be so much fun. Because they, they talk about what you can do with her. Um, mm. You got some ranged attacks, which is neat. Um, instead of, you know, you got Cloud and... and Tifa, who are your your melee guys, and then Barrett and right. Paris. Well, Be now it just y- Yuffie and you both. other guy. Yeah, and so. uh, but now you can be both, and you have control of this other guy by doing team moves, which that's really interesting because I'm wondering if they're going to incorporate that with other characters in the next game. Like, right? Are you going to be able to do team moves with Tifa and Cloud or Barrett and so and so? Yeah, that'd be interesting. That would be really neat. To be, I, I feel like they that. would, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be so cool. Yeah, um, I, get, I can see some of those being really dope. Yeah. And so, um, some of the things they said with the combat is that Yuffie can throw her shuriken mm-hmm. and, as well as um, add elements to it. So, you can change right. to, like, fire, ice, wind, or water, or whatever. Well, she, she's, like, a kind of a mixed... Uh, what is it? Like... There, there's a specific, she's like, about type material, of... So. Like a battle mage almost, where she can she can mix her materia with her weapons and stuff. Uh, yeah, and I and I super dig that. I like that that kind of ability because it makes your it just makes the character super versatile. And mm-hmm. when you're playing basically only her, right, in terms of like a main character, um, I think that makes it all that much better, right? It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but I wonder uh, if they're going to keep that whole mechanic mechanic in the in the second one too, because that seems like right. really uh, a lot of a really in-depth mechanic for her specifically um, right specifically my my guess is it's gonna be died down like or uh reduced right like mm-hmm. it, it's effectiveness more like will probably be reduced like instead of a whatever percentage buff it's reduced they reduce that in half or something so it's still super useful but you know or it'll be to a lesser extent like it's less abilities to it like she only has two of them or something mm-hmm. um or, maybe, maybe they'll keep we'll it in, in 15. They very well 15, could. Uh, all the characters had their unique stuff. Like, yeah. um, what's his name? Had I mean, all same his thing guns. with, I mean, everybody in um, in 7 remake uh, was fairly unique. Like, Barrett shot, right. Tifa was close combat, Cloud was a little bit of everything. Like, right. That makes sense. So, I could I see, could see that. it. That'd be really neat. Um, yeah. The other thing that they showed off was we got voice actors for these characters now yeah um, and one thing that i i, I want to pull from this is that vice the immaculate has a voice the immaculate actor yeah which which really, as we we're talking about earlier it's like the first time we've had uh news of this right like right like, like they showed vice in the last trailer mm-hmm. and the background people were like oh it looks it's like one of the vr missions or something fights, vr mission fights. yeah but giving him a voice actor like this, I mean, he could just be grunts from getting hit or whatever, or saying yeah. a line or two for his move. 
But I don't know. Maybe. Well, the he so might be having more than that on on Twitter. The, the guy, the guy who's voice acting him, is like, "This is like a dream come true. I'm yeah. getting to voice act this guy." It made it sound like it's more of a formal, like, "I am voicing this character," mm-hmm. and it seems like this is a reimagining of the entire FF Seven universe anyway. So, like. Right. If the character didn't die at Dirge of Cerberus or whatever, it makes sense that he might have a voice actor in one of these. Like, it could be yeah. a side mission or whatever, for all we know. He could be the secret boss or a secret boss, right? Because mm-hmm. um, there, there's a couple, like, hidden bosses and stuff in, like, 15 and other things like that. They're not they're not adverse to doing stuff like that. So, who knows? Right. You know? But I mean, he, we, he, she, Yuffie could finish him off in this set, for, for all we know, right? Like, because he never comes back later, away. right? He like, comes back in Dirge of Cerberus. Oh, wait, Dirge of Cerberus is after. Right. My bad. Yeah. So, like... And he said so he's the leader of um, Deep Ground, which are mm. the soldiers that come out in the trailer in this. Right. And they, they so, had hinted in one of the areas in FF7 are to Deep Ground, like very lightly. Mm-hmm. But like there was very clearly a Deep Ground like facility and stuff in one of the areas. Yeah. So. They're like, wow, I guess they have a lot of these underground facilities. Like they yeah. say like offhandedly. And we're like, there's oh, that, OK. There's I a couple things that. you can find in the background of one of the facilities that's like, oh, yeah, this is clearly like associated with this. I think it's the one where you fight. uh is it Azul? Or, uh, Azul, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it was in that area that you could see some stuff like behind walls and stuff that was like, oh, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's kind of neat too that like you f- it's that you fight a behemoth down there in the. It's perfect. The second time you go down there because Azul is a behemoth, mm-hmm. and <laughs> it's like that's that was really cool. It's so good. It's so good. Um. So yeah, I'm excited to see what role Weiss has to play. Yeah, right. Uh, this. I think I think it'd be um, cool. I'm excited to see. It's, but it's a different we're also big action. Final Fantasy like nerds. Yeah, I'm a, I'm uh, a big uh, fan of Dungeon Cerberus when yeah. a lot of people aren't. But I I, I, I like couldn't get behind the gameplay. Like I kept trying to play. I'm just like, ah. I will definitely play through it when they release that chapter on the uh, that mobile like yeah oh, retelling be thing. Because I'm like I don't necessarily want to play dirge of cerberus just because of like how clunky it felt when i was playing it like it just Mm -hmm. didn't feel good to play for me um i I could probably go back now and probably not mind it but i know when i was playing it back then i was just like "Mm -mm, no yeah yeah i'm excited about that too because dirge cerberus is one of the only like it was dirge cerberus and the mobile the like phone game from like forever ago uh before was before crisis or whatever it's called before Um, yeah those are the only ones that i just haven't had any dealings with really so you know i'm excited to be able to experience the, that bit of the lore because ff7 mm-hmm. lore is like close to my heart right <laughs> yeah because locked in japan like we didn't you have you, that in you broke up for a second there you mind repeating that um that was uh locked in japan mm-hmm. the before crisis there yep, was like fan translations and stuff but like yeah. i never did that right so <laughs> i'm interested to see what happens same same it could be super cool um then also the the uh voice actor for vice is is damon mills who hmm. also does the voice for frieza in the dragon ball z tv show oh great oh so, that's awesome and, and the games so that's a great voice actor if, it's if different I'm, from the other guy no the other yeah. guy was david boat hmm. and if i remember good. correctly uh the the guy who voices him in this he was like this is like what was one of my voice acting like dream goals is to be in like something like this and into Final Fantasy VII, yeah. and I, I love when people who like deserve the part kind of thing like people who are fans and like really into stuff get it. Um, I th- we had another one of those recently for was it in FF Seven? It was in something uh, that we we had a role announced, and I'm just like I'm so glad because they like actually like the thing, you know, mm-hmm. not just like some rando. So I think it's great. Yeah, I love that. Uh, next up, we got uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Uh, I am super excited for this, but at the same time, also like, hey, we'll see. <laughs> um, I'm glad the first one's getting you know redone. It it it's been a while, right? Like every time I try mm-hmm. to play the first one again, it's like it's, it's kind of hard. Like it it's not Knights of Republic hard. Uh, which I, I still to this day play, <laughs> um, but it's it's hard. Like it's clunky, it's dated, like it's very like obtuse, like in a good way. Like it, it's endearing obtuse, right? Where like yeah. there's like you can just go here's a planet. I'm just gonna go explore it. I'm gonna go on the Mako, 
just go explore it. And, yeah. you know, there's something cool about that, right? Like, they tried to emulate that in Andromeda. Uh, people like that kind of thing. And I, I think it's cool. But it just was very, like, flat feeling, in, but, in all honesty. Yeah. Um, and then we have, like, the graphical overhauls, right? Um, Mass Effect 1, I'm super welcoming of it, too. The other one's hit and miss, right? Um, so, like, I feel like Liara, for example, because that's on the screen right now, She's a little too shiny. Like, she's too vividly blue. Like, it doesn't fit, like, the color palette that she we know her from, right? Um, some of the characters look kind of weird. Like, it's not, like, bad weird. I'm not, like, complaining like that. I'm absolutely going to play this game. Uh, some of the textures are better. But some of them look like it's an updated texture and not, like... It's, it just doesn't fit with the rest of the stuff, you know what I mean? Um... But there's a few of them that look really good. So, like, it's it feels like it's a mix for me. Um, I think you brought up earlier how, like, it's cool that your your shepherd stays your shepherd throughout the entire trilogy in this one, you know? Yeah, that's really neat. Because, like, there were some times where, like, I think in the jump from one to two, like, the hairstyles were different. The, yeah, well, that was, like, a huge difference. There were that were different. So. Yeah, yeah, the, the, this jump from one to two was always a huge jump. Um, because two, two and three, they kept very like integratable. Um, and it's just weird. Um, I, again, I have, this, this is one of my favorite series, right? I have the, the vinyl box set. That was probably more than I should have spent on it coming in. Um, this, this is a series very near and dear to my heart. Um, say what you will about the third one. I majoritively enjoyed it. Like, yeah, it's kind of sucks that the ending was kind of binary, but the rest of the game is fantastic. Like, yeah, that, that's how I feel about it. Like, just because that is, the you know, what it is. The journey, not the destination. Right. <laughs> Which is very, like, works for space, right? <laughs> um, you know, I, I think there are some things that look way better and some things that don't. And I, I haven't seen enough fully to judge it entirely, right? Mm. Um, we, we know that they have changed some things. We don't know how deep that goes, right? Um, but... I'm just, I'm earnestly excited to be able to just play this trilogy again. I think Garrus looks great. <laughs> uh, yeah, Garrus looks much better. He, he looks... The aliens look better, but, like, some of the humans look weird. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I mean, all of them, like, it, it's Bioware. Their, their yeah. facial animations have never been great, like, from day one. <laughs> it's always been, like, <laughs> like, kind of voice <laughs> mouse. And it, yeah. it's funny because people, people complained about it so bad with Andromeda. I'm like, have you ever played a Bioware game? Honestly, like they have, they have never been good with facial animations. This one looks like it might be actually, well, at least like more so with the face. Like it's a step in the right direction for them, which is yeah. a big jump. Um, <laughs> that's probably why they went first person more with the <laughs> Anthem. <laughs> yeah. They're like, let's not do facial animations. Right. Let's, let's avoid this. But um, I don't know. I'm, I'm still super excited for it. I'm going to be playing it. Uh, it's coming out next month. It's like less than a month now, or right, right, right about a month now. Yeah. Uh, close. May May fourteenth, I think it just said on the on the trailer. So, you know, I I can't wait. I again, I love this series. I have played it through. I, I think this is probably gonna be fourth or fifth time I've played it. It's one of the handful of game series that I will play through multiple times. Um, Knights of Republic being probably the one I've played the most. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's like Knights of Republic, Tales of the Abyss. This one, this. this a couple other ones that are like on my like short list, right? Um, right. But th this one, this one is definitely one of them. I played it on PC. I played it on PS3. I played it on PS4. And I uh, when they had the well, wait, no, it was it on PS4? It was not PS4. I played it on PS3 and then the PS3 like Legendary Edition or something. I think it was, some it was something like that. Um, but man, <laughs> I, I I love this series and I'm super excited for uh, what mm -hmm. we get out of it. Andromeda was a mess. Um, I remember when it came out, I was I was very much I was standing up for it a lot. Um, I, I believe personally still that there are elements of the game that are fine, but overall it is a flawed game, um, and that, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, do you have anything else to add to Mass Effect, Jack? No. If you haven't played it, get this and play it because it's good. Yeah, Ma Mass Effect is one of those series like if you like like a space opera type thing. If you have any interest <laughs> yeah. in Star Wars, if you have any interest in anything like sci-fi, this is one of those games that you should 110% play. Yeah, 
check out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean that very sincerely. Some of my most powerful gaming experience come from that game. Like, it's good. It's, it's yeah, for real. Um, yeah, I... I I, I have nothing else to add because I, I can gush about it for so long, right? Like, I don't even know <laughs> what to add into it, right? Um, but, yeah, J- Jack knows how, how how much I love it. Uh, so, yeah, check it out, please. Please. I know I'm going to be picking it up. Uh, next up is our big news story. Big news story of the day. Da, da, da. It's a PS5 update, guys. There we go. Pretty awesome <laughs> PS5 update. I think it's the first one. This is the first, first major. major one. Yeah. We, we've had multiple ones that like fixed it from like bricking <laughs> yeah. in the beginning bits. And we've had a couple other like minor ones. Uh, but this is the first like, this is the first big one. I would love more games to play because that's kind of where I'm at with the system. I like the system. I want to play more of the mm. system. But there hasn't Multiple been games. too many. Uh, I'm waiting for, I think Raya is the next big one that i'm waiting for yeah. um and, but i love the system like we, we've we had a whole special on it right <laughs> mm-hmm. um and so th- this update adds a lot in terms of uh certain functionalities um some of it i feel like aren't done yet but at least it's something uh i think jack has a list up i remember one of them being uh some compatibility extra compatibility with the ps4 yeah, so we got um, compatibility external USB drives. So now you can have your external uh, storage, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the, the, the weird thing with the external storage is that it's only to hold games. So mm-hmm. you'll plug it in. You will transfer a game over. You could delete it off your system, um, but you can't play the game. You'll have to transfer the game back over to your PS5 in order to play the game. Um, I think it's a little funky. I hope that they fix that or change that in the future with advancements in solid states and stuff. Uh, or that, that I understand why they're not doing it as, as of this time, but I hope that they change that because it's super annoying uh, with onboard storage being what it is. Um, Cause like, even with just like the handful of PS4 games and like two, three PS5 games on there, my, storage is like full uh i feel like i was able to fit way more on my ps4 pro <laughs> like you know that that's not okay um and yeah so ho- hopefully they're able to do that where it can run it off of it i understand why if they can't um mm-hmm. it could take a couple years for all i know but yeah you know at least it steps in the right direction i again i still think it's funky mm-hmm. um but yeah they have, they have added the integration with uh the is it the picture same picture and picture thing? Is that what it was with the PS4? Yes, cross generation share play, which is a new feature for PS4 users. It's um, super cool. Like we, we use it on the PS5 because we both got ours, and it's like you're in the same room. It it was so, it's so cool. Yeah, uh, you're literally sharing the, your screen uh, with someone else, so you can see what like say me and Bill are playing. I can see Bill's screen in the top right corner of my or screen. wherever you want to put it. You, you can decide I feel where you like want to put putting it. Because certain um, games HUDs are like more important in certain spots you know yeah um and so bill and i did that we were just talking in chat and um viewing each other's games while we were playing but then they also have that ability where you can just take control of each other's games and play their game for a bit yeah i, I, I still haven't done do that. that that's interesting but you can do that now with the ps4 so ps4 users can play ps5 games through this which is really well you still have to have a ps5 or access to your friends or something i don't know access exactly to your how that's friends, gonna run. PS5, but you can play <laughs> those ps5 games and try them out yeah so i have that's no idea really how that's cool. going to work like functionality but i think that's still super cool i'm glad that they're advancing older hardware on top of it right because it's mm-hmm. still like impossible to get ps5s <laughs> i was trying to help my buddy get one earlier today and he and just it, it i feel like it's been harder like because you know how when we were getting them, it was like the first waves and like we were able to like mm-hmm. we were able to try multiple times, right? In very consistent amount of time. And like everyone was very well like newsed up on it. Right. Um, this one, there's there's still a ton of people looking, but it's like less the, the, like the initial rush is gone. And so it's much more inconsistent on top of it. Yeah, uh, like so the it, PS Direct it's been hard. news are, are coming up like every other day, but they're yeah. getting sold out pretty quickly. So. Yeah. It usually takes like 30 minutes maximum kind of thing. 
uh, and you're you're they they put you in by random. It's not like by when you get there. It's they randomize where you are in the queue. Mm-hmm. Um, so you say say you had three queues open. One could be four ahead. One could be or you say you have forty minutes left in line. One will be ten minutes left in line, and the other one will be like three hours in line. Yeah. <laughs> and chances are you're probably gonna, you're gonna be out of luck. It. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of a mess still, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But progress, hopefully. Eh. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Th- so th- this thing, uh, this update, not thing. I can use words. Uh, um, adds a lot of new features and stuff like that. I'm excited to see, you know, where where this platform goes. I-, I like it a lot. But as of right now, as it's standing, until we have more games, it's sitting as a PS4 Pro Pro. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I saw I-, I think I saw an image that uh has been going around that somebody put it as a ps4 pro max or something like that it was funny <laughs> um but it's it's a great piece of hardware i i really hope that they and i know they are they're putting more titles on it they're working on it and like this happens with every new launch right especially um, during covid yeah i my my problem is i'm always terrified that a like a platform will go the way of the vita because the Vita is like an amazing piece of hardware. It, honestly, like it at, at its time, it was so far ahead spec wise. It was amazing. And, you know, it wasn't from like there, there's a, somewhat of a lack of people buying it. But the big problem was there's nothing that want, made you want to buy it. Right. There, there mm-hmm. was the very like anime heavy games. Um, and we got some of those mostly just because the, the platform was much more accepted in Japan and stuff like that. So a lot more of those games got adapted out here. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. And it just, I love the system. I play it every chance I get. Like, if I could run something on it, I'm going to um, rip the store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I regularly still, like, refer to it as, like, one of my favorite consoles. So, you know, take that as you will. Um, but, uh, obviously, this is a mainline console. It's it. I would be very surprised if it went that way. <laughs> um <laughs> So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what the future is. I know both of us are going to be looking very closely at it because we were both early adopters. And that's how early adopters go. It's You have your one or two games that you're, like, super excited to play. You play them, then you sit. You sit and wait. Uh, I think the, that Raya game is going to be the next big one. I think there's a couple other, like, decent ones that we'll probably get, you know, summer, end of the year. I'm sure we'll hear way more come um, the announcement season, as we call it. You know, E3, Summer Games Fest, stuff like that. New Game Plus Expo all these other, you know, live stream events that do announcements. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like that's kind of the state of it, right? Yeah. Um, and that's really all we got for today, right, Jack? Do you have anything else to add? That's about it. Cool. Uh, we thank you guys for joining us on another episode. Um, we do a blog. We try and do it weekly. Try is the keyword. There's some weeks where we don't because <laughs> we're bad at scheduling sometimes. Um, we but there are posts you should check out. Yes, There's there are posts. A of them. Yes, there are quite a handful of them. Uh, <laughs> we also now are on video. If you're not watching on video and you're listening to the podcast, we are doing video on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube or wherever, uh, we do a podcast version of it where it's just audio, so you can you know take it on the go or not have us in the background or whatever. Uh. And starting this Thursday, so if you're watching this on day of release uh, of the episode, uh, I'm going to be playing on stream on Thursdays, or Thursdays this week might change the future weeks, but should be Thursdays. Uh, on stream, I'm going to be playing the game Tales of Vesperia with my good friend Juan. Uh, he goes by, I think it's the Latin Prince on, um, on Twitch. Uh, great dude. Follow him on Twitch as well. Follow us on Twitch uh, and check us out. Uh, we're going to start doing it on Thursday. It'll be Thursday night. I'm guessing probably 7.38-ish on, uh, in Central Time Zone. Uh, so check us out there uh, and get see some anime games. We play, we're going to be playing Tales of Vesperia. I've only played about half of it, uh, which is one of my big like Tales of games uh, sins because uh, Tales of Vesperia is considered like... <laughs> It's one of the what we what I what I refer to as the Tales Holy Trinity, um, which being Symphonia, Abyss, and Vesperia, um, they all came relatively out in the same amount of time and were all very highly regarded. 
Uh, so that's why I refer to them as such. There's other games that are obviously really good too, but that, that's the one I refer to as that. Um, and so I'm going to try and correct that. I'm going to correct one of my uh, Tales of Sins. <laughs> uh and yeah we're always trying to produce and make new content stuff like that if you ever have any ideas for us or if you ever want to get in touch with us and do something with us just uh reach out uh and that's been another episode of the magazine rack uh this has been bill and i'm jack and, and we miss you ty rack. we miss you ty we miss you so much come back next week and we'll see you next time same magazine rack channel same mm -hmm. magazine rack time i don't think that worked is it reverse? Uh, I'm just going to cut the recording. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.